Hello everyone, my name is Rob and in this quick video I will show you some real production techniques on how to extend a set by using Cinema 4D's integrated camera calibrator. This video is sponsored by Maxon, makers of Cinema 4D. And uh, if you want to check out the whole talk, it's about a 45 minute talk, um, you can uh, check it out at one of the links below or left or right. For now, let's go and enjoy. <laughs> First, I had to find the perspective of this scene with, with the camera. But since it's a locked camera and there's no motion, there was no way to track it. So let me show you the, um, the scene, that, the way I set it up. Because if you have a moving camera, you can use the motion tracker in Cinema 4D, or you can use the motion tracker in the other tool and just get out the camera. But there's no motion. It's a locked camera. And I remember there's a tool in C4D that allows you to, to get out of the still to get the camera. Does anyone know that tool? No one? Who doesn't know the tool? Show me your hands. Don't be shy. All right. OK, cool. My, I don't believe you. <laughs> you know it. Um, it's a tool called Camera Calibrator. And just as Vanishing Point, I think Adobe could go in and say, we have a new feature. It's called Vanishing Point. Probably 90% of the people would believe it. Oh, it's amazing. No, it's been there for about 10 years. Um, same for Camera Calibrator. I think it's been there for four versions or so. I don't know. And so few people know about it. It's amazing. Let me show you. You create a scene, you put in a camera, and then you go to tags, Cinema 4D tags, and you will find it right there. It's called Camera Calibrator. You select this tool, and you apply it to the camera. And in the Camera Calibrator, you have the option of choosing an image which you want to calibrate on. So let's go ahead, choose that image, and make sure you go into your project settings and your render settings, and you match the render settings and the, the, the pixel settings of your image. So it's a 6K image, exactly the same ratio and everything. It's all there. And now what you can do with the camera calibrator is you can go ahead and calibrate it very similar to the process that I showed you in Photoshop a minute ago. So we can add lines, grids, and a pin. And I'll walk you through this really quickly um, on how you can achieve uh, and calculate uh, the camera position of the shot. So I'm just going to, again, draw a square, just a grid on this, on this area here, and try to be as accurate as possible. But you have to tell C4D where each axis is. It doesn't know. So you hold on the Shift key and say, all right, this is the Y axis. And you will see it right here pop up. Again, hold on the Shift key and tell it this is the Z axis. So what, the, what do those, those um, colors mean. Yellow is kind of like, it's OK, but OK, we're getting there. Green is cool. Got it. Seems like a legit perspective. Red is telling me, come on, try harder. You know you can do better. So um, let's go ahead and add another grid. So I'm just going to find something that is um, hopefully uh, working better with this. So let's add this one here. And this one maybe here. OK, and again, I have to click. So this is the uh, y axis, and this is the z axis. And we're getting there. You know, it's, it's, already, it's already liking what I do. And I'll, I'll do another one just for the x axis. OK, so this is x. And I will add another line. Try to be as fast and accurate as possible, although doing it live. And I know this length. I looked up how, how large this tenth is, and I know it's exactly two meters. So I define a length so it knows what, what the, the ratio and what dimensions we're talking about. And now I need to add a pin. And as soon as I click there, you will see in the middle of the picture there's a pin, and I can drag and drop this onto this, onto this line. And you will find out that this is the source of my image. So we have 0, 0, 0 right there. And I can create a background object and a camera mapping tag. So I can select my, my object. And as soon as I, um, as soon as I create um, a cube, for example, you will see that this cube now can be, can be moved along. It's not quite perfect. I should invest a bit more, uh, more time into getting more, more, more lines. I think you should have about seven to eight lines on grids. But basically, now we have recalculated the, the rough position. 
And I will jump to the actual final um, calibrated position because you will see how many, how many grids and, and lines I applied. There's a grid here, a couple of lines there, a couple of lines here in the background. And as soon as I create um, a cube here, now you will see that now it matches pretty much perfectly what we have. So this is pretty cool. Uh, in fact, it's quite amazing. But how, how do I get the light now? Well, that was tricky because I thought, OK, well, I have the position, but I need to match the light. Well, for this, I just created a sunlight. And for the sunlight, I know that you can set specific details on where the light should be. So I, I asked Flo, uh, Florian, where, where, when was the shot? This was shot August 3rd. You can see it right there. So I punched in the date, August 3rd, 2015, at 1 o'clock 52. And I googled the position of this, of this area. So I put in the longitude and latitude coordinates. And boom, I had the exact same coordinates in C4D with the lighting as it was just in this, on this day. And also, I activated the physical sky. And um, I just created a floor as a reference. And I added a, a little SWAT guy in there. And when I render this, you will see that the shadows pretty much match with the original shadows um, of, of these guys in the background. So this was pretty easy to light. And, um, and yeah, this is, this is the way um, this was solved. So that was fun.